In this video, I want to talk about a very unique camera, the Nikonos 3. I'm also going to be doing a comparison with the Nikonos 3 and the newer and more popular Nikonos 5. And at the end of the video, I'll give you a few reasons why you might consider the Nikonos 3 over the newer Nikonos 5. If you haven't heard about the Nikonos cameras, they're completely waterproof and they shoot 35mm film. This specific model, the Nikonos 3, was released in 1975, making it almost 50 years old. Nikonos cameras were extremely popular for divers, surf photographers, and photojournalists. So I want to talk about a couple shooting tips that make it a little bit easier to use this camera. The number one tip to get good photos with these cameras is to shoot with the lens stop down. You'll want to shoot somewhere between f11 and f22 depending on the lighting conditions. Now these cameras use a zone focusing system. Let's say I shoot at f16. You'll first set your aperture here. The two orange indicators on the focus scale are telling me that everything from about four feet to infinity will be in focus. I like to shoot with the lens stop down with a great depth of field. That way I'm not messing around with my settings when I'm in the ocean. And you can just focus on composing your shot and taking your photo. If you are shooting action with these cameras and you're gonna be shooting with a faster shutter speed, you're gonna to wanna to have a higher ISO film. So the last tip is to mount the lens upside down. That way when you're looking down at the camera, flip the camera up like this, change your settings, and then flip it back and you're ready to shoot. These cameras are extremely old, so you will need to take some good care of it. If you do take them in the ocean, make sure you rinse them off with fresh water when you're done and keep all the O-rings nice and lubed up. So in order to load film to this camera, you're gonna have to first take the lens off. So you'll pull the lens slightly and then you'll twist to the left. The lens will pop off. There's a buckle on each side of the camera. Basically, you'll use these in order to pop the camera open. So put these over to the side and pop that straight up. The camera should come apart like this. Now, this is just the housing shell of the camera. Once you have that off, you'll see that there's a little film pressure plate here. You'll open this up. You'll put your film in on the left-hand side, pull the film across and load it into the other side. And you'll need to put the pressure plate back down over the film. Now before you put the camera back together, it's a good time to check your O-rings and make sure there's no dirt or dust on them. When everything is clear and good to go, put the camera back together the same way. You'll push this down. You don't want to have any space in between these two. You want to make sure this is nice and flush. If you have some problems putting it together and it doesn't want to meet up, you probably need to grease up the O-rings. Now once you have the camera back together, you'll just put the lens back on, press down and turn to the right everything should line up. There should be just a little bit of give on the lens when you go to pull on it, that's okay. But when you're ready to take the film out, you go to the top of your shutter dial and you'll wanna put that on the R for rewind. And you'll go over to the film winder on the left-hand side. There's a little arrow indicating to turn clockwise and you'll basically just wind this clockwise. After winding for a while, you'll feel the tension release and you'll know that the film is completely wound up on the left-hand side. So there was a good amount of accessories made for the Nikonos cameras, uh, starting with a few of the viewfinders. So this is the first viewfinder we'll talk about. It is made for the 35mm and the 80mm lens. You mount the viewfinder on the camera and you can kind of see here there's two boxes. There's the outer box and then there's the inner box. The outer box is going to be frame lines for your 35mm lens and the inner box is going to be frame lines for your 80mm lens. I really like using this viewfinder when I'm in the ocean taking photos because it allows me to hold the camera out in front of me a little bit and be able to frame up my shot. This is also a really cool accessory. It's another viewfinder for the 35 millimeter lens. And when you look through the glass here, you can see the frame lines. One thing I haven't mentioned about the Nikonos 3 is that it doesn't have a built-in light meter. When I purchased my camera, it came with this light meter, which was a common accessory. So the two lenses I have for these cameras are the Nikkor 35mm 2.5. It's just a perfect everyday focal length. I really love the 35mm lens and it rarely comes off my camera. My second lens is the 80mm f4. I love the 80 millimeter focal length for surfing and action sports. This focal length gives you the perfect distance between you and your subject. That way you're not too close to the action. And I'm really happy with this lens combination with the 35 and the 80. It really covers everything that I shoot, but there are some more lens options for these Nikonos cameras out there. 
So I wanna talk a little bit about the differences between the Nikonos 3 and the Nikonos 5. I'd say the biggest difference between these two cameras is the design. The Nikonos 5 has more of a clamshell design. Loading your film is a little bit easier on the Nikonos 5. So the next big difference between these two cameras is the Nikonos 5 has a bigger and brighter viewfinder. I never really felt like the Nikonos 3's viewfinder was small, but after getting the 5, I did realize it was a lot nicer looking through this viewfinder and it is easier to compose my shot. So another point for the Nikonos 5 is that the shutter speeds go up to 1 1,000th of a second. So on the Nikonos 3, it only goes up to 1 500th of a second. The Nikonos 5 also has a dedicated dial to set your film speed. This makes it easier to over or underexpose your film. Probably the most important difference between these two cameras is that the Nikonos 5 has a built-in light meter and it does run on a battery. You can use it without the battery, but if you want to use a light meter, you will need a battery. One last feature with the Nikonos 5 that's really nice is it has aperture priority. I want to give you a few reasons to definitely consider one of the older Nikonos cameras like the Nikonos 3. So the first reason is going to be reliability. Since the Nikonos has no electronics, it's fully mechanical camera, it's going to be a lot more reliable. If you do get some water or you flood this camera, chances are it's probably going to still work. I've been shooting with this camera for seven years now and I've never had any problems with it. It came out in 1975, this camera is almost 50 years old. I think it's a real testament to the build quality and the design of these cameras that they last a really long time if you take good care of them. If reliability is important to you, I would definitely go for the Nikonos 3 over the newer Nikonos 5. Now the second reason is probably just as important as reliability is price. These Nikonos 3 cameras can be found for maybe half the cost of the newer Nikonos 5. I originally picked up a Nikonos camera because I wanted to do ocean and surf photography and surf photography has been a huge passion of mine. If there's anyone out there that might want to get into water photography or surf photography, these are the perfect camera to start out with because they're really easy to use and they're very inexpensive. When you compare the Nikonos camera to something like a water housing that you actually put your camera into, first of all you can see the size difference. The Nikonos is just way more manageable for beginners. I always try to advise people to pick up a Nikonos camera before going out and spending a little bit more money on something like a water housing with a digital camera. Just because they're waterproof cameras doesn't mean you can't take photos on land with them. They do just as well on land as they do in the water. So I hope you enjoyed this video. If you are interested in this camera and you have any questions, please let me know down in the comments. And if you're new to the channel, please consider subscribing. Thank you for watching. See you next time.